Hello everybody and welcome to the last video of this year, 2022. As we wind up, I also want to talk about a simple activity that takes place in equities and that is the process of clearing and settlement. If you've worked in the activities of equities trade settlement, the terms that you often hear are clearing house, post trade, pay-ins, etc. So in this video, let's understand in great detail about the clearing and settlement process on trade life cycle of equities. Equities, as we already know, are normally in most markets exchange traded products and therefore let's understand how the equities trade settlement takes place. I'm your learning partner, Sushila Hariharan. Clearing is a term that is often used in finance, especially in context to payments. In any well-developed economy, there are two types of clearing. The first one is the funds clearing. The funds clearing is handled by the central bank of the country in India. It is handled by Reserve Bank of India. In the United States, it's handled by the Federal Reserve and other entities in different parts of the system. The second and the most important aspect of clearing is the one that we are going to be discussing in our video today, and that is securities clearing. Securities clearing is a process of establishing the payments made towards securities. Securities are of three types, equities, money markets, and bond products. And we are going to be discussing about securities clearing of equity-related products in this video. The trade life cycle in the last two decades has become fairly well organized and well centralized. It comprises of three main steps. The first one is trading. Trading is the activity of buying and selling of securities. It could even be buying and selling of foreign exchange or commodities, but that's not the topic for discussion over here. Here we're going to be discussing about trading as a most important activity of a bank, investment bank or a commercial bank or a hedge fund or a mutual fund in different parts of the world. I've already uploaded a video on trading uh, and what, what does a bank's dealing room do. I'm sharing the link of that in the comments section below. Before trading, is there nothing to be done by the bank? No, there is. Those are called as pre-trade activities. We've already discussed about pre-trade activities as a part of middle office function in risk management and compliance. The second one is clearing. Clearing refers to the process of generating obligations and fulfilling your obligation. Every trade results into commitments. Those commitments have to be honored by both the counterparties to the trade. Who ensures that those obligations are honored by the counterparties. That is the function of clearing. And we'll be discussing now why clearing is such an integral part of ensuring the seamless flow of trades and post-trade activities. The third step is settlements. Settlements means the process by which obligations are squared off. The buyer receives the securities, the seller receives the funds, that is the process of settlements. So this three-tiered structure works something like this. Trading is normally done in the front offices, whether it's on New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, London Stock Exchange, Tokyo Stock Markets, etc. It is a front office activity which results into creation of positions, long or short positions. It results into creation of obligations. Clearing, which is a back office activity, is an operationally intensive activity. It starts with identifying the obligations and fulfilling those obligations. If anybody asks you in an interview, what is the meaning of clearing? Clearing means to identify the obligations and fulfill the obligations. The third one is settlements. Settlements is a back office activity and it involves the payment of those obligations to the counterparties. So this three-tiered structure is fairly well understood in an investment banking operations nowadays because of the way it has been processized. Is there nothing after settlement? No, the most important post-settlement activity is indeed reconciliations and ensuring that your assets and funds are in order. John Bogle, who's written many books on investing, 
has this very smart thing to say, learn every day, but especially learn from the experiences of others because it's cheaper. So I also recommend the same thing. I also follow the same thing because you can never stop learning from the experiences of others. Okay, now let's understand in greater detail about this clearing mechanism. STO stands for Securities Trading Organization. If you're a fan of investment banking operations book written by Simmons, he often refers to STO as a securities trading organization, which is the entity for trading, which is identified as an entity that could be trading. The entity that is trading could be an investment bank, a commercial bank, it could be a hedge fund, it could be a mutual fund, whatever. It is called as an STO. As the buyer of the securities, the STO needs to pay for those securities to the seller. So let's assume a <clears throat> OTC trade like this, where the STO buyer is directly trading with the seller. The buyer pays, has to pay money for the securities. The seller has to pay the securities, right? I mean, that's his obligation. So once the trade is executed by the front office, it results into generation of commitments, generation of obligations, which have to be fulfilled either on a T basis or a T plus one or a T plus two basis, depending on which markets you're working on. Okay. Look at this very plain vanilla structure of an OTC product and you can make out that this results into some bit of risk. What happens if? Is there no risk at all over here? No. The risk involved over here is that one of the parties pays to it. Let's see that. The buyer pays the funds to the seller but the seller does not deliver the securities. Is that possible? Of course it's possible. The buyer pays in the funds, but the seller fails to provide the securities. Such a risk is called as a counterparty risk. Okay, And this risk is inherent in any of the OTC products. And it is in inherent in any of the systems that follow, uh, do not follow the DVP basis for settlements. So the counterparty risk is a risk that one of the parties performs and the other fails to perform. What happens if the seller delivers the securities, but the buyer does not pay the funds? Okay, so this is also a problem. This can also be called as counterparty risk. Over here, I've used the term default risk only because to show that both terms can be interchangeably used to describe this present situation where the buyer or the seller fail to fulfill their obligations. So the default risk is the risk that, or the counterparty risk is the risk that one of the parties has performed they are part of the obligations, but the counterparty has failed to perform the, the, their part of the uh, obligations. And this results into settlement failures. Can this be something done about this situation? How do we try to mitigate or reduce the counterparty risk? Let's look at this. So most stock exchanges have established what is called as a clearing house. A clearing house is an entity that is independent of the stock exchange. It is independent of the buyers and the sellers. And the buyers and the sellers have to pay in their obligations into the clearing house. The clearing house then will match the transaction details. But how can the clearing house match? Right, CH over here stands for how will the clearing house match these details between the buyer and the seller because they're getting the trade details only from the buyer and only from the seller. Now that's not that's not the concept of matching. Matching means you need to get the details from an independent party, and that independent party over here is a stock exchange. So clearing house matches the trade details between the buyer and the seller and sends out the obligations to the buyer's custodian and to the seller's custodian. In the United States, that clearinghouse is called as the NSCC, the National Securities Clearing Corporation, which is a fully owned subsidiary of DTC, that is a Depository Trust Corporation. Okay, so the clearinghouse's biggest job is to match the obligations of the buyer and the seller, generate those commitments, and once the payments have been done, to match those payments with the details provided by the stock exchange. This concept wherein all the buyers and all the sellers make the payments into the clearing house is called a centralized clearing. 
Centralized clearing is now mandatory even for OTC derivative products with the establishment of CCP, that is a centralized clearing counterparty. The centralized clearing means the activity of settlement is now centralized and it is not decentralized anymore. The clearinghouse validates the trade details with those received from the stock exchange as I just mentioned. It matches the payments received from the buyer with those that are received by the seller. And in the process, the counterparty risk is reduced. In the United States, that clearinghouse is the NSCC. It then generates, it settles off, it nets out the positions between the buyers and the sellers and provides the details of the net positions to the depository which in the United States is the DTC, the Depository Trust Corporation, and Depository Trust Corporation then makes the payouts to the counterparties to the trade. Okay, so first you have to get the pay-ins from the counterparties, which the clearinghouse does. The clearinghouse then passes on the details of the net positions to be squared off, to be settled, I'm sorry, to the DTC, and the DTC then manages the Payouts. If you're interested in a career in investment banking operations, corporate actions processing, trade life cycle, loan processing, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Look on to my LinkedIn profile as well because I keep posting rich content, researched content on these topics. Thank you so much. My very best wishes to all of you for a great 2023.